Hi everyone, my name is Bertie and today we will be discussing about insectivorous plants and these are the plants which eat. What is an insectivorous plant? Insectivorous plants are also widely known as carnivorous plants and they derive maximum of their nutrition by trapping and consuming insects or other living organisms. The two main types of insectivorous plants, they are active and passive. Well, the active insectivorous plants trap insects using organs which move like the Venus flytrap and the passive insectivorous plants are those which lure the insect towards it with things like scent, appearance, etc. For example, the pitcher plant. So here is an animation of the Venus flytrap. So from this animation, can you guess whether the Venus flytrap is active insectivorous plant or a passive insectivorous plant that's right it's an active insectivorous plant this my friends is the pitcher plant can you guess whether this is active or passive that is correct it is passive Question time! I have a question. Why do insectivorous plants have to rely on insects for their nutrition? Well, I found out. Insectivorous plants live in areas where there is a considerable absence of nutrition and nutrients in the soil is very less. Hence, they have to trap insects so that they can fulfill their needs. Let's have a quiz. Fill in the blanks. Insectivorous plants are also called as dash plants. Dash type of insectivorous plants use organs which move to capture their prey. Pitcher plant is an example of dash type of insectivorous plant. Great! Are you ready with your answers? Well, let's have a look at the solutions. Insectivorous plants are also called as carnivorous plants. Active type of insectivorous plants use organs which move to capture their prey. Pitcher plant is an example of passive type of insectivorous plant. Now let us learn in depth about one certain insectivorous plant called as the Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap is a classic example of insectivorous plants. They grow in marshy areas and require up to four hours of direct sunlight every day. They have two snap trap like organs which move. The teeth like ends of a Venus flytrap help it to trap the prey. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that Venus flytraps are actually leaves? These my friends are the parts of a Venus flytrap which is open. Well the teeth like structure which you can see is called as the cilia and the short strands of hair are called as the trigger hair. Now that we know the parts of a Venus flytrap, let's have a look at a small animation about it. Let us imagine that this is a Venus flytrap which is open waiting for a prey. Oh, and here it comes. The prey, that is a fly in this case, is attracted to the Venus flytrap. And oh, it's gone and sat there. The Venus flytrap waits for a while. We'll be learning soon why. And suddenly, snap, it closes the trap and the fly is now doomed. 
Soon enough, after releasing its digestive fluids and digesting the fly, it opens up again, waiting for more flies. It's question time. I have a question. How does the Venus flytrap close? How does it know that a fly is coming and it has to open up? How does it know that a fly is sitting inside and has to snap shut? Well, I found the answers. To begin with, the Venus flytrap does not know that a fly is coming. It senses its presence only when the fly sits on it. Except for when trapping the fly, the Venus flytrap is always open. So, how does the Venus flytrap know that there is an insect sitting on one of its lobes? Well, the flytrap moves. Let us first ask, how do we humans move? We move with the help of the neurons in our nervous system, which give electric signals to or from our brain. Like our sensitive skin, which feels everything, the Venus flytrap has short, still hair on it, called as trigger hair. The trigger hair, the mechanism of closing the Venus flytrap is activated when the trigger hair are pressed just enough to get folded. The insect has to touch two or more trigger hair within 20 seconds of its arrival. The reason for this restriction is so that it does not raise a false alarm because that means wastage of precious energy and resources. If you remember, the Venus flytrap live in areas where there is very little availability of nutrients. So what happens after the trigger is pressed? Well, the base of the hair gets a kind of electric shock. This electricity passes to the midrib, which signals to the opening of tiny holes or pores in the leaf, making the water in the leaf to be transferred from one part to another. This change in water pressure makes it snap shut. The insect is now trapped using the teeth-like structure called as the cilia. After some time, now that the plant has made sure that it is definitely an insect, it's n it starts to bring out its digestive fluids. It's quiz time! answer whether the following statements are true or false. Insectivorous plants grow in areas where there are many nutrients. The Venus flytrap is actually a leaf. The Venus flytrap closes immediately after the insect sits on one of its lobes. Are you ready with your answers? That's great! Now let's have a look at the solution. False. An insectivorous plant grows where there are very little nutrients. Hence, they need to eat insects. The next is true. The Venus flytrap is actually a leaf. The last one is false too. The Venus flytrap closes only after the insect has touched two or more trigger hair in less than 20 seconds. Let's have another quiz. Choose the correct option. Pitcher plant are an example of which insectivorous plant? A. Pitcher plant is not an insectivorous plant. B. Passive. C. Active. Have you got the correct answer? Well, let's have a look at it. Pitcher plants are passive insectivorous plants. Let's have a look at the next question. Let's have one last question. The teeth-like structure on the Venus flytrap are called as dash. A. Molars. B. Jailers. C. Cilia. Got your answer? Great! The correct answer is 
C. Celia. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn about another type of insectivorous plant, that is pitcher plant, stay tuned to my channel because I will soon be uploading a video about it. Meanwhile, if you want to learn any other topic in this teaching method, then don't forget to leave a comment in the comment box below. Thanks! See you later in the next session. Bye!